Test. Thank you for keeping your support of, the, of this uh, class by your attendance. I uh, continuous appreciation. Uh, congratulations and uh, successful completion of the first uh, term. There are uh, important, interesting, and uh, proven challenges that we need to overcome within the month of February. Um, a lot of Mondays are holiday, so we are missing uh, lectures. And uh, coming week, several classes in this, and one of the instructors, actually the only <laughs> instructor, are, are going for a conference. So I'll try either to uh, connect by Zoom or send pre-recorded, but uh, we are basically missing four lectures because presentations were originally intended to be in one uh, meeting so we, we, we use two instead of one and then we are losing next week uh, monday tuesday next monday for, for the holiday so i'll try to <coughs> fix and address as, as much as possible but maybe the practical way to overcome it is to include some very little theoretical basics into next midterm so that uh, uh, you learn and deliver to each other. But it's not the, it will be only for next chapter. Then I'll stop it and we'll do only actually practical things in the in presentations. So please think about it. I will ask for, for your votes if you're, if you're okay to include a little bit of theory in, in the presentation. And why this idea is, is coming to the background material that is scheduled to go on right now, after we are done with uh, separation of electronic and equal degrees of freedom, is a true core foundation for, for the rest of the course. So uh, if I just postpone it, do it like a week and a half later, we will not we will not be able to uh, complete projects in time. So we we'll, we need to design something unusual with cooperating. Just give me a heads up. Um, so I'll, I'll probably communicate by email your uh, the list of possible tasks and, and ask if you are okay to uh, include a little bit of theory in your next wave of presentations. Um, what are we going to, oh, uh, Hello, Hanman. Thank you for connecting. The uh, goal for practical meeting today is probably the easiest and most pleasant in, in the whole course. Uh, it we will, and, and some of you already know how to draw molecular orbital. By Gaussian, right? Okay. Uh, anyone? Uh, so, I, I, Haley is on my side. Anyone else uh, uh, has experience of floating molecular orbital? Yes. No. A little bit. Okay. But uh, you, you will enjoy it. it it's, it's quite uh, easy, easy and pleasant. Uh, and I will take for myself the easiest part, part of the instruction. Next Wednesday, the same time. So Monday and Tuesday, please do not bother to come to the class. If there will be something, it will be on Zoom. But on Wednesday, in a week from now, please come to the class. I will, uh, the uh, postdoc from my group, Dr. Yuan Han will come and uh, provide additional sessions so that we do not get delay on uh, practical skills. Come on, you are already expert in Gaussian. You can teach this course. <laughs> Uh, it will be recorded and you, you guys will you will see the things recorded. <laughs> Hello, thank you for joining. So uh Lola, did you have experience of plotting molecular orbitals? Can you 
help of us if needed. Yes. Just say yes. Oh, maybe the microphone is muted, but so is it going? So is it okay, yes, thank you. Uh, so I, I have more and more support. Adam, do you have uh, yes. experience of plotting molecular orbitals? Yes, no, somewhat. Okay, so we have at least three uh, persons who can help uh, if if I miss to do or something. Uh, next next week. Um, when uh, Dr. Yuen Fan will make this lab, there will be a little less pleasant, but still useful thing of converting uh, Gaussian electronic structure calculations into so-called density of states plots. So those of you who are interested in electronic properties, like payments, like conductivity, are definitely interested in density of states. Those of you who are interested in uh, optical properties, uh, also need this as a background information. Uh, if your advisor does multi-electronic uh, perturbation theory, you, you need density of states. If your work is related with mechanical properties, this is of lesser importance. It's still important part of the of the class, but it's not a, a key thing. But uh, um, what else? <clears throat> the whole chapter that we are starting today and where we miss like several lectures uh the title of this chapter chapter is hardly fox theory so in the lab we just do calculations that complement uh hardly fox theory and, and give examples so the um i can talk endlessly but let me give you a little assignment so if you're bored to listen to me you have something practical to do it will maybe it will be a little So if, if you want and can, please draw in Gauss view a molecule with one titanium and four uh, hydroxyl groups. So by the end of the meeting, we need to optimize it and uh, try to go over the menu that you you all have learned through the presenters and uh, try to uh, first like broomstick optimization and then after the geometry is optimal it will be very quick because the molecule is small after you you uh, know the geometry is optimal do single point energy by uh, hartley fog method and select the functional uh, uh, not functional, select the the basis set Leno Leno DV. Uh, the calculations will be done probably quicker than I will stop talking. And uh, after I stop talking, I will add the demonstration. So um, the previous chapter gave us general idea how optimization of geometry is going on right we were playing little robots to find the minimum of harmonic potential right and it is what is going on when we optimize geometry now for about month and a half for the, for this chapter and next chapter we are going to forget about nuclear degrees of freedom we are going to focus only on electronic degrees of freedom so our main goal is to uh, find total energy of a molecule, which uh, is uh, combined as four electrons interact to each other, sit in right orbitals, and then uh, give the total energy. And uh, finding total energy is, uh, for example, to compare two geometries. Like if you, if you, uh, uh, the one with lower energy will be more realistic. Um, on the way to finding the total energy contributed by electronic states, we will revise, review the, the concept of uh, atomic and molecular orbitals. Right? So these concepts are rigorously introduced in uh, this Hartley-Fox theory, and 
the lectures will provide uh, concepts and, and equations behind them. Now in the lab, we just uh, run particle calculations and see, observe this uh, molecular orbit. So if I want to make an overview of what, what we expect to get, the molecule is combined of several atoms, right? The atomic hydrogen-like orbitals hybridize for molecular orbitals, and each molecular orbital has its own energy, right? So, though as many orbitals, as many pairs of electrons will be occupied, and the rest of orbitals will be empty. Make sense? Uh, please say if uh, if you are absolutely confident, if you do not have no idea what we are talking about. It is more or less. And, okay. Uh, well, there was a, a first one. Uh, I have no idea what, what I'm talking about. Mm. We'll better quickly talk before we, we go forward. So, how about hydrogen atom? I, uh, is everyone happy with hydrogen atom? So there, uh, if, we, if we take Bohr idea, which is wrong, but just qualitatively, we have electrons in different orbitals and the orbital have discrete uh, energy levels. Mm -hmm. If you go to freshman chemistry, the electrons can take this S, P, D orbitals, right? And each of them has its own energy. Mm -hmm. Now, if you bring, several atoms or several ions together, they form a molecule. And the electrons from one atom and from another atom start interacting, repelling each other on one hand. On another hand, like electron from first atom does feel attraction from the second atom. And the electrons start making a motion, like each, each electron makes a motion surrounding the whole molecule. So instead of sitting on a specific atom, it hybridizes over the whole molecule. And this. Oh, thank you so much. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Umar. Sorry, I didn't notice uh, you right away, but I'm very happy to see you connected. Oh. Hybridization of electron over several uh, vicinity of several atoms. And this discrete electronic state when electron is distributed for several atoms is referred to as molecular orbital, right? So each molecular orbital has its own energy. And we may have more orbitals than electrons. So some orbitals will be occupied, filled by electrons, and some will be empty. So now everyone is accepts it, right, as, as a concept. Amir? Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, why do we need this information? <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to say something really important. The, it, it is not absolutely correct, but it is the right way of thinking. So if you have occupied, energies of occupied orbitals, energies of unoccupied orbitals, and we know their value. So the energy offset between uh, highest occupied and lowest unoccupied defines the color of a material. So as soon as we can compute this information, we can tell what is the color, is it red, green, blue, uh, transparent, white, uh, black. So it's, it's, it's really, cool and critical and it, it immediate application of what we do here. So as soon as we uh, compute this uh, property, we can scan different molecules, you know how to create or borrow them from database and we can tell what will be the color, right? So we, as, as soon as we, uh, we are done with basically today, we will be able to predict color of material. And as we go through the course, we will master this. Too. Another thing, which is important at least for payment, maybe for, for every of us. So if we know the energy difference between lowest, mm, no, 
I start over. If you know that energy difference between highest occupied and lowest unoccupied is approaching small values, is getting close to zero, then the material starts to conduct electricity. So when the, the energy of set is uh, like big of the order of like two electron volts, it means it is optically active. If it is close to zero, it becomes conductive. So assessment of this energy of set be between this occupied and unoccupied is called gap, electronic gap. And it is one of the critical properties of, of the material. So electronic properties that is responsible for conductivity and uh, color. So I, I hope I gave enough information to get you excited and motivated. Okay, uh, those who are online, I, um, while I'm talking, I, I was asking everyone to draw titanium hydroxide molecule, optimize and uh, start hard reflow calculation with um, Lionel Tudizi. So I am going to, to share screen and try doing it myself. And as we go through, um, I'll probably make a full of, of seats and make, make sure we all are on the same plane, same page. Okay. So, titanium. Now, here there are different uh, coordination numbers. Um, if any, oh, did anyone uh, made this molecule or you were waiting for me? Just you know, raise hands if anyone did the molecule. One, anyone else? Two, anyone online? So I have a point, um, I already drew that it is for, uh, for, if I wouldn't say, how do how do we know that there should be four hydroxyls? Like if you design this molecule, uh, I think in in class we have two professional chemists, Haley and Adam. So why titanium hydroxide uh, has a stoichiometry titanium OH four? Is there any justification? How do we get to this idea? Like because if I imagine myself sitting in a class. Instructor mumbles something and tells combine titanium hydroxide. And then there, there are these options. I would probably choose this one. Six neighbors. Why not? It looks beautiful. Or only two neighbors. How do I decide which of them to, to select? Anyone can help and explain? Or just try? But uh, you, you, did, you did four, right? Okay, uh, let's go to, oh, someone typed. Oh, Lola typed, yes, yes, she, she's here. Mm, I'm going to Google and typing P table for periodic table of elements. So uh, then, I want to learn more about electrons. And here I'm selecting the titanium. And um, here it shows the Alvau principle for titanium. Alvau, yes. Alvau, no. Of bow maybe yes so solid yes solid yes maybe other solid no okay so there is, there is no solid no so uh, in uh, any individual atom we have SPD orbitals and uh, there is a certain charge of the ion and certain number of electrons right if you ionize remove all electrons then try throwing them back. They try to populate lower line energies first, and then going higher, higher, higher. The closed shell, uh, uh, when there are like eight electrons 
uh, like S shell field and eight electrons, two S and two P are very stable and they correspond to noble gases. Everything that deviates from noble gases is, is less stable. So um, if we If you look on the old bow of titanium, we see that there is one, uh, the second shell is fully filled, the third shell is fully filled, and it will be quite stable. Now, above the third shell, we have two S electrons and two uh, 3D electrons, right? Those electrons are unstable. They are like huh, easy going. So uh, any hungry element, any oxidizer may remove these four electrons from titanium. By removing this uh, two 3D electrons and two four S electrons, it will come to full configuration. So we go uh, four times back, back one, back two, back three, and we arrive to argon. So, uh, titanium, which is four times ionized, is as stable as argon. Therefore, uh, chemists would say titanium prefers four plus oxidation state. Four plus means we remove four negative electrons and total uh, charge of, of the ion becomes uh, four plus because there are more positive than, than negative. Make sense? Okay, so it's four, four plus. Um, now we go back, and there are two versions of uh, uh, four neighbor tetrahedral and square planar. The basically uh, in freshman, anyone teaches freshman chemistry? Anyone took freshman chemistry recently? So uh, in freshman chemistry, the instructors or TAs do the following argument to convince the tetrahedral geometry. Uh, or they tell a story about. So taking four balloons, connecting rope to each of the uh, end of the balloon, then taking a ring and then putting rope inside and pulling. So when they all are connected by their uh, tips, they try to take most uh, distant orientation in space. And uh, they just equally distributed in, in this uh, Areas and then it comes to this uh, tetrahedral arrangement. Here, I'm going to this space. So right now it is titanium, and these spheres, um, they just maybe right now they're like hydrogens, but it, it symbolizes the chances to get anything. To stick anything there. So you select uh, oxygen, go here, and just click on each of them. One, two, three, four. And then uh, I can do, uh, let's say, broomstick or any um, Okay, so you see it just changed a little bit. So Gaussian agrees that it is not a bad uh, geometry. Um, last two meetings, you've learned uh, a lot of wisdom how to optimize it. If you want, you can do it. Uh, but right now, we are just looking for concepts. So this is the model. And we are going to run uh, electronic structure uh, calculation for it. So we go to calculate, Gaussian calculation setup. Uh, we are not going to optimize. We keep energy. In method, we select Hartree Fock, it is the uh, natural option. And basis set, uh, we need to go to one of DZ because the metals need special treatment. We, we, we need to have a dedicated lecture on basis sets. Uh, okay, zero charge. Okay. I did miss something in just explanation. What is the charge of the OH group? Yes, so it is negative one, 
negative one, negative one. So total negative four. And titanium is uh, four plus. So totally balanced. Therefore, our charge is zero. And uh, we expect that all electrons will be paired. So it's single. Submit, save. And I can call it like uh, titanium or four HF one or two DG. Save, submit. And it's already ready. So it, uh, now, uh, of course, we can uh, look into results and look into summary. So we uh, summary shows the total energy with minus uh, about 316 atomic units. So in narrow sense, all uh, quantum chemistry methods are designed to predict total energy, just one number for each molecule. Of course, it is boring and not interesting. But if our goal is uh, mechanical properties, geometry, chemical reactions, then we just need electronic contribution to the interatomic potential, right? And then this number is, is, a, is a key uh, element to go back to geometry. <clears throat> there are theorems telling that one method predicting this total energy better than, than other. Uh, and there is a substantial reliability in any computational method in predicting this total energy. Um, we are going to do to, to, to look on, on other things which are more interesting and more useful. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, a little thing from uh, the physical chemistry class this morning. Um, what I'm, I'm going to tell is very qualitative. So it's only between us. Do not tell it in public. I probably will even cut it from the recording. So uh, why electronic contributions affect forces between atoms? So here are, um, here is a little example. Uh, those who were on the PCAM class this morning, you will not see anything new. I will just repeat two, two figures. If you have two uh, positive ions, each of them has negative clouds. I'm, I'm thinking about like hydrogen molecule. Then there will be orbital where this S orbitals will, S atomic orbitals will condense in the space between, between these ions. And there will be like, area of space which is saturated with negative charge so we know that same charges repel opposite charges attract ions positive ions should repel but if there is a little cloud of electrons then first ion attract here second ion attract here and in fact they both stay together so it uh, contributes attractive force between things that originally were repelling and uh, this is justification why electronic structure is, is needed. And it is a way, uh, oversimplified way, uh, how electronic structure calculations contribute like mechanical properties, geometries, pathway of the, of the reactions. Actual things are much more complicated, but it is just between us to, to, to justify that it is, it is needed. Uh, I do have, three questions to myself that I'm, I'm going to answer. Uh, probably this little exercise is so simple that you all can repeat it without, uh, without help. Just try to, do it, uh, try to do it and arrive. And um, the numbers can be slightly different if you optimize by different ways or not optimizing, but it will be of the same order of magnitude. Uh, I do have 
three tasks for me. First, uh, find uh, total energy in command line, in file, in dot log file. Second, um, look on the uh, energies of orbitals, energies of orbitals, orbitals in in dot log file. And third, which will be a little more lengthier, but most beautiful, is how to plot images like this, but really computed. How to plot shapes of molecular orbitals. Plot. Uh, any or each M O molecular orbital. So uh, it's quite doable task for remaining hour and a half. Probably will be even even quicker. So uh, I am going to go to the command line. And look inside. So, uh, when I was starting the, the job, I've got this .com file, right? And it, it looks in a, in a way as uh, you were teaching each other uh, on Monday and Tuesday. So there are coordinates, and there there is a task what to compute. So basically, it tells use Hardy Fox with Lenovo 2 dz uh, beta set. So in, in fact, one can make tasks for Gaussian even without uh, Gauss view. It was how it was originally working. Like Payman was showing that one can modify coordinates and one also can modify the task what Gauss view must, must compute. Uh, another important thing is uh, here before coordinates, zero and one charge and multiplicity zero means it is new chemically neutral one means uh it is like number of electrons up and down are equal and it is in, in a single spin uh, configuration so ls minus l2 uh this file is the smallest so this one two three four fifth column shows the size of the file so 690 symbols very small file Next file has um, the extension dot log, and uh, it saves, it records anything that Gaussian is doing while uh, going through calculation, and it records, it writes there all useful answers, whatever we request. Specifically, it should show total energy. Specifically, it should show the energies of orbitals. And uh, the check file, uh, serves multiple uh, role. First, if one does a complicated calculation and one wants to like do half of the job today, second half of the job tomorrow, one can save intermediate results into check file. Uh, second um, benefit of this file, it stores all intermediate information, including spatial distribution of, of uh, electrons for each orbital and by applying specific commands to this file we can extract this uh, electronic cloud uh, some people do not care and some people really like it it's it's it uh, it looks beautiful and artistic for for uh, for some for some people okay so uh, let's just look inside the uh, log file just to to get not log, uh, log, log file. So it's not very long, but maybe a little longer than humans want to, to read. What is important? At the very last line, there is a word normal termination. If the log file doesn't have the word normal termination, it means there were some problems. One needs to uh, double check what is going on and maybe resubmit the job. Um, then it, it tells some silly jokes from a database. Uh, you, you will see that jokes will be different each time you, you run Gaussian. Um, so 
the interesting thing that I observe is this abbreviation E R H F S and S C F done. So um, if I return back to this uh, Gaussian result summary, um, yes, it looks very much like what I see here. So E R H F and the number here and uh, number there, there uh, look quite, sim quite similar. Basically, they are the same. Right? So it means that the main quantity Maybe it's a boring, but main formally main quantity, total energy of a system of electrons in this molecule can be uh, obtained without using Gauss field, just by making some tricks in command line. The abbreviation RHF stands for restricted Hartree-Hopf. Restricted because we tell uh, specifics about uh, the equal number of spins up and spin down. Um, if one does different spin multiplicity it will be unrestricted with uhf and if you do like dft or other calculations it will be different abbreviation so e rhf is is good but not universal but if you look for scf done probably it will be more universal so i'm going to uh, get to this line without scrolling the whole file so uh, there is um, one more unix unix command that some of you may have seen before so grab uh, s c f done so by typing this command it's same as uh, find option in like a uh, word or a browser right so it scans through the file until it it uh, identifies this certain pattern and uh, if one types minus n key then it, it tells in which line this record are showing up so uh, basically if we run gaussian on ccast as we were taught yesterday or if we run Gaussian just in a command line without Gauss field, we still can analyze results and get something useful. So it's quite a basic thing. I'm sure you all got it, but let me quickly make a tour and see that you all came to the same uh, um, stage. Log L O space space. What's happening? Normal termination. Good. No, um, you can scroll through and explore, or you can just do. Um, type S C F uppercase 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 S C F space uppercase D, lowercase O N E. Uh -huh, done. Uh, close the quotation. Yes. Enter. You see, it's very close to what is there. Okay. Let me, let me see that. Yeah, so no, 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 just energy. Okay. Method HF, good. Uh, 321 is is not good for if, if there are metals. Like this, mm -hmm. save, 
Mm, let's even so speak a name. Um, I would call it the king of OH4. <laughs> then HF one two three Z. Submit. Yes. One two. Error. Why error? Let's let's do uh, maybe the boomstick for this. Oh, I just could something different. All right, yes, one, no, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then, and the result. Summary minus three five nine. Now if we go to command line, team, there is dot log file, I think I'm correct. Yes, CF done. Uh, okay. Thank you. Yep, perfect. Thank you. Okay, uh, where, where we are now? Okay, so job type. Oh, it's 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 told. But this one is. Oh. Hit Q. No, so it is stopped. You, you better stop it. Then, uh, PS Q minus nine nine one seven nine nine one seven nine. Okay. No, it's uh, rerun. Not X Q. No, 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 no. Just as you. I don't know what it's. Uh, you need to use Q and then the name of the process, number of the process. Okay. 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 Let's do it over. Do you save the file? So there is nothing to open. Okay. Let's do let's draw. Oh. Yeah, let's uh, I'll try once again and then we'll go to some of the um and what is the difference here and there? What, what is this? Oh it's what you see on, on zoom. Okay. Um, Fail, tetrahedral, click, option one, two, three, four, close, boomstick, calculate. Coefficient, coefficient stuff, uh, energy, method, uh, fuck you for good, value to DZ, submit, save, uh, material, ay, 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 ay. okay. Uh -huh. 
also um, do not worry. We it, it's uh, one of the reasons why people use command line. So uh, one can let me skew the goals he wants to do. Oh, you, I know what is going on. You didn't go to your directory. Um, it, it, um, <laughs> so um, the uh, photon server is in transit. It, it's not like it helps us, but it is not absolutely healthy. And the home directory is full. And therefore, if you try to do something in home directory, it will stall. Therefore, right immediately, right after logging in, one needs to go to the scratch uh, subdirectory, what most of us did. If you, if you do not do it, it will uh, make some unpleasant uh, experience. Uh, that's okay, that's okay. It happens to me all the time. So, once again, continue. Tetrahedral. Click. Extension. One. Two. Four. Domestic. Just in case, let's save. Um, ten for each home. Home. Wants to Gaussian configuration setup. Energy. Method. Submit. Save. Easy. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, done. And now, if you go into results summary, it is this number. Okay. Now, when you go to your command line, yes, minus OT, there is this dot log file. So if you type web scf done, it is the same number. Oh, my pleasure. Okay. okay. So. Yes. Um, can I kill the still goes views? You do, you do, you do, okay. If you don't have anything, uh, yes, pro processes. Use the processes. Yeah, it doesn't re respond. Uh, so, uh, because we were not in the right directory. So, uh, minus no. And then just the name number of the process. Two nine six four eight. And another one is was six one five three one. See it disappeared. Um go to one. Now let's go view. Is mouse for this or no for this? That's fine. So going over time tail tetrahedral. Then going to 
truc. Mmh. Oui. Mmh. 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 Broomstick. And uh, let's save it just in case if something happens in the next few seconds. Eighteen or H four. No, it's good. Uh, motion calculation setup. Yeah, thank you. The energy, keep energy, method hard default. So change by the set and PV. And uh, So let's uh, make it self speaking name to this HF method. When to submit one, two, three, four, five, six. It does. Okay. And now we go to results and minus three, five, nine. Okay, if you go to command one, you grab SCF done. Okay. Or for each. Oh, same number. Minus three. Okay. No, 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 no. Wait. You, you, you. It looks like you didn't. See. Oh, no, no. It, it will be quick. Calculate. Uh, job type energy method. Submit. We have to submit this under. Seven submit and trim in your file. Yes. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six. Done. And now we go to results. Mm -hmm. uh, now let's go to the right directory where these calculations were done. Oh, please go there. LS? So LS space minus OT. Enter. So those are three last files. Now let's do grab. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Done. And then the no, the com is input and the log is output. You see the same number. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I, I will visit few people more. If you are bored, try to identify what are just uh, what are the energies of occupied and unoccupied orbitals, and uh, make a guess what will be the color of this material. And if you already, if you are like uh, if it is quite easy, then try to find your own way to plot molecular orbitals. It can be done either in command line or by Clicking right right uh, buttons in the software. Uh, I would say SCF done in the in the quotation. One one types of the SCF. For which stands for self consistent field space, and then file name. Mm 
Uh, okay, let me try. Um, I, I, I would feel more comfortable from the from this side. Sorry. Self consistent field. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. And it looks like uh, you have more than one titanium, so it's, it's, it was a different molecule. Or you use different bases or different methods. You can you can learn it without going to to. Uh, uh -huh. So uh, here, try one or two dz. It's a little bit more reliable for uh, transition metals. Go submit. We can give it a different name. HF. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. If we go to results, summary minus three, five, nine. And if we go to current one. Perfect. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. No, everything is good. Um, grip is CF done. So you get the same number. What? What do you? Oh. Uh, Open uh, log Gaussian output. Open results summary. Okay. Okay. Let me quickly check uh, with those who are working uh, remotely today. So. Uh, I'll stop sharing. Uh, make sure that all participants are co-hosts. Co-host. 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 Homer. Not co-host. Yes. So um, I'm asking you to share screen in the order I see you. In, in here, so Hanman seems uh, going first. So please, share, Hanman, please share screen. Do you see my screen? Okay, yeah, I see it. I see, yeah, perfect. You can stop sharing. Thank you, much. So, Lola, if you... Uh, are viewing to share screen, please do. 
I know that, that uh, in her research group there is very active experiment to be completed this night, so maybe uh, what were your chance one, your chance two, your chance three. So you you probably skipping it for the next time. Next is Sarah. Sarah, would you like to share a screen? Um, so here, wow, beautiful, beautiful. You found how to do orbitals. Yeah, yeah but I don't know what is this. Now we have a candidate who will uh, select the skills of putting orbitals for next presentation. And can you share the um, command line that, that I see you are? Uh, um, yeah, I got all the steps. I I all okay, them. okay. You did optimization rather than single point. Yeah. And you see it, it gets. A little bit smaller and smaller from point to point, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, may I ask uh, which um, uh, tool do you use to access graphical software? Are you doing CCast on demand? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. CCast. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I think your microphone is is not, maybe something is wrong on our side. Um, is this okay? No. Yes. Now it is okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, okay. So, and next is Omar. Would you please share your screen? Okay. <laughs> you, you, now you see how easily you can fool me. <laughs> okay, then I, I'll share screen myself and we will go forward. So, let's just look through uh the was there any uh anything in the command in the chat no okay so i'm going to explore this file uh once again in more details and those who did same as as i did who did just single energy as you have done we will see the same thing. Those who decided to do particle clock optimization will have the same block of uh, information repeating again and again. So for Sarah, your file will be like uh, 20 times longer. Uh, just just uh, letting you know. So uh, old fashioned uh, scientists would learn everything about the molecule just by reading this in output file. But we are like going half and half uh, reading from file and, and doing graphical. So let me scroll, scroll, scroll and come to the area uh, like about half page after this total energy. So let me attract your attention to the table that tells alpha ok and alpha verge. So who is ok? Yeah, correct. Who is verge? Yes, unoccupied or virtual, like imaginary. Okay, so uh, what do we learn? What do we see by looking on this uh, table? Um, like what are the properties of these numbers? Uh, homo plus one, two, three, and so on. But uh, would you agree that they increase as we go from the beginning to the end of the table? We're getting higher. We're getting yes. from. Yes. We start from minus 20, and then we get like minus three, minus two, minus one, then we go to zero, and then we start getting to the positive values, right? So they, they increase. Um, I wasn't doing uh, calculations for atoms, but if we would do like for titanium atom only, this calculation should reproduce the orbitals going from one S to S and then going and until here, occupied and then unoccupied, right? If we are doing something more advanced, we're doing a molecule. By the way, here there are shapes of atomic orbitals. Uh, we will do uh, mm, 
molecular orbitals, but uh, the reference for uh, atomic orbitals is, is available here. Okay. Um, if we look on the periodic table, we see that there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve orbitals, right? Occupied, and then the rest are unoccupied. Uh, here we have uh, so there are five times five, twenty-five plus another uh, four. So 29 occupied orbitals, right? And um, those are molecular orbitals which on which electrons are sitting. And since we do restrict it, it means on each orbital there are two electrons. If you go past this line, uh, this will be unoccupied, empty orbitals. But if we apply radiation, electromagnetic radiation to a molecule, it will naturally promote electrons from occupied to unoccupied. And the lowest energy available for such event for promotion will be from homo to homo, from highest occupied to lowest unoccupied. So the energy difference of these two numbers do have critically important value. So um, what are the units of this uh, of these numbers? Anyone wants to help? Guess, suggest? The difference. Yes. Uh, told Hartley, and I, I've heard another voice. So I was saying, yeah, uh, Gaussian has Hartree as a default unit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. So uh, what is the, uh, how big is Hartree? Okay, heart rate is big. <laughs> uh, Sarah, how big is heart rate? Um, 27 something electron volts, something Yes, like exactly. So, uh, and if, uh, if I do not know what electron volt is, is there any scale, like where the heart rate comes from? Is there any natural um, features that, uh, the heart rate units. I can ask anyone, and I know it will be a little challenge, but Haras, I'm going to ask you if, if you have any suggestions about how big heart rate is and connection to natural. Uh, maybe carbon? Uh, simpler. Hydrogen? Yes, exactly. Uh, do you want to continue? It's enough. But, but it, it was very, very correct. So, uh, I was asking Hadassah because uh, her major is physics and on the part of the physics there are, are posters with planets and, and constellations. So it relates also to astronomy. So uh, it's not my profession or even hobby, but about 20 something years ago, even more. So in, in, in previous century, there were several unmanned uh, missions sent to past Jupiter orbit. I think the names are Voyager, right? So they were like having very little uh, instruments looking on this uh, planet and sending signals back. And in addition to these instruments, there were a golden plate attached to this uh, uh, little spaceship with some interesting information. I see Adam, I forgot your name, Rizvi. And Rizvi were noting, so, so that you, you've heard about it. So can you tell what was inscribed on this golden plate? Information of the whole, yeah, like information of all the countries, any particular thing of the country is written on the uh, plate. Yeah, uh, good. Adam, would you like to add anything? Uh, yeah, there is also like um, it. There is a line pointing to the nearest stars, and uh, so I guess an alien civilization who picks it up 
could see our exact position, I guess, of our star or planet. Okay, yeah, th thank you very much. So it was a message to potential aliens. And since they do not speak uh, our language, it was something related to natural objects. So like uh, navigation between stars. And in addition, it was a spectrum of hydrogen because it's something universal and 98 or 99% of the, of the universe is hydrogen. So the energy of set between ground state of hydrogen and ionization, so how much energy is needed to remove electron from hydrogen atom is half of Hartree. It's like 13.7 electron volts. So Hartree is double the energy needed to excite an electron. So it's kind of natural unit. Make sense? So if someone asks what we do on computational chemistry, we send messages to aliens. <laughs> um, uh, the conversion factor to electron volts, which are quite useful in material science, is 27 point something, 12. So if you want to learn about color, you need to subtract uh, the energy of uh, uh, LUMO, the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. BC stands for Bohr's calculator. Uh, based, then subtract. Copy. And subtract the energy of uh, HOMO, the highest occupied molecular orbital. So this is the value of homo -luma gap in the heart rate unit. So half of a heart rate, it's about the energy needed to ionize uh, hydrogen. You see, it's, it's quite big. And if you multiply it by 27, whatever, 12, it's like 13.4 electron volts. So is it uh, small or large, which, uh, color range does it belong to? Is it like infrared, visible, UV, X-ray? Which kind of electromagnetic radiation do we need to ionize hydrogen? Anyone online wants to help? Um, let's Let's just go to Wikipedia and try. Suppose I do not know the answer. Uh, let's go to Wikipedia and try to find uh, um, Google. Hydrogen ionization. No, it's boring. Born text books. It gives this number, but it doesn't tell. Let's um, try. No, it doesn't help as well. Let's do um, hydrogen spectrum. Okay. This is maybe uh, not the best, but it, it gives the uh, idea. So those of us who were on the first meeting on PCAM may remember this figure. Maybe not. Uh, so the here the figure that probably appeals to 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 everyone. So uh, this is wrong figure because we know that uh, atomic orbitals are SPD. Bohr theory is obsolete, but it gives just paradigm. So lowest Bohr orbital, second Bohr orbital, and ionizing 
hydrogen means going from the lowest Bohr orbital to the highest possible or even higher, right? So here there are uh, transition energies and we see that some of them belong to uh, infrared, some are visible and some UV. Shorter wavelengths in nanometers means uh, the uh, UV range. So going from lowest to highest, it will be uh, shorter than uh, 100 nanometers, shorter than 94. So 13 electron volts should be related to about 100 nanometers and definitely belongs to invisible UV radiation. Make sense? I think some of, of this uh, of this diagrams use uh, color scheme. No, the, here then the, the, oh, visible. So anything shorter than visible uh, in wavelength or higher energy will be UV. Uh, anything longer than visible in nanometers or smaller energy and smaller value of uh, transition energy will be infrared. Right. So if you have uh, 13 electron volts, it means it will be UV. Um, can human eye detect UV radiation? No. So if the Gaussian calculation by Hartree Fock method of titanium hydroxide were correct, it predicts that titanium hydroxide is invisible. Right? Or it, 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 it's not like invisible man science fiction. It's, uh, you, you put it in a beaker, it's like white or, or liquid. You, you still can see refraction, but it, it, it's something transparent or, or whitish. Uh, I need to say that Hardy Fock method is not used in any practical calculations. It gives an error. It overestimates the band gap. Actual band gap will be smaller, will be about 3.5, like four times smaller, but qualitative prediction is still correct. Titanium hydroxide is invisible or whitish powder, or um, hydroxide, it is dissolved. Probably it's, it's uh, dissolved in, in, in solvent. Okay, so I'm going to go along seats and observe if you can get this number. And uh, it's, it's not a big challenge, but I, I want to make sure that we all can extract it and if uh, we need to do any homeworks, you can do similar things to, to other, other molecules. Okay. Okay. Now let's subtract another. Uh, let's try, let's say BC for board calculator. Yes. Enter. Yeah, BC, BC. Okay. Now let's paste. You can, you can paste from here so that you don't uh, scroll. Okay, let's do it all. Six. So they both are negative, right? If you do. Bracket, we have this number, and we can add more brackets and multiply by conversion factor. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah, good. Thank you. No, no, first type BC. Control C to stop anything. BC for board calculator. Enter. And now copy paste your arithmetic expression. Okay, and now if you want to multiply by factor, 
Yes, as, as you were taught in the, like, like the primary or middle school yeah. in brackets. And then, uh, let's do more of this log file. Enter and just uh, space, 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 and we, we use human sense until we see right. Stop it. Yes. Wow, you're able to memorize so many digits. It's signature of uh, when we need brackets because it, it will it will be not fit about two minuses. Okay. Brackets and multiply by the factor. Okay. So now type type these numbers. Um, how do we get these numbers? If we just look through the file, just hit enter and look what we see. Hit space and look, look at we see. Hit space, we see. Just slowly browse through browsing about here. As you see, this AA means we are close. Okay, we are at the right place. And now we do, yes. So the home is here. Homer is there. Uh, uh, Homer is lowest. Luma is higher. So we need to we big minus small, higher and small. So we um, minus. And since we subtract the negative, we put hundred. This much, and then we can put another. Bracket. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
And then space and hook, space and hook, space and hook. When you see A, it means you are about here. No, Q stopped. No, B, C, it will create. And now copy paste the this one is homo, and then this one is homo. Paste. Can it paste? Minus, minus the brackets. Yes. Enter. But you can do it step by step. So it's not about half. And brackets. Okay, and then multiply. Yes. Okay. Excellent, thank you. Okay, so you, you got slightly different numbers, maybe because you were not optimizing or, but yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I'm going to um, stop uh, sharing screen and uh, asking uh, Hanmant, would you like to share screen? Okay, yeah, thank you. You can stop sharing. Uh, Lola, would you like to share screen? Option one, option two, option three. You're probably busy with uh, experiment. Yes, no? Yeah, probably busy with experiment. Uh, Sarah, would you like to share screen? Okay, so what is the energy of uh, homo Luma gap? Uh, let's go to the command line and we'll figure it out together. Uh, let me ask your permission to uh, type things. Oh, okay, well, I told that she will uh, uh, ask Sarah. Maybe you need to like click on the on this little lock lock. No, 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 wait. Slowly move mouse down. Lower, lower, a little lower. Now to the left, yes. Click here. Uh, use your credentials and now select uh, the zoom. Okay. And now let me check. Okay, so, uh, oh, you did BC, but you didn't uh, look for quit. Um, minus LS minus LT. So you do have uh, this titanium 4 h 4 log, which probably should contain the information that we need. So more, and then uh, titanium or H. Oh, can you go back to the command line? 
Yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah. Maybe I need to uh, ask your permission once again. Uh, please share screen once again. I, I pushed the wrong button. And I'm going to request. Thank you. Hold. What? O4, H4, yeah. Oh, yeah, thank you. Okay, so um, <laughs> as we go through, we see a lot of information. And we basically look for the, yes, the information that was uh, just recently passed. Uh, but The, there is a specifics. So since you requested optimization, uh, it repeats this uh, hardy fog calculation again and again, uh, several times. So there will be uh, more than one list of the, of the orbitals. So, um, what one can do is uh, maybe look on the last 50, 500 uh, steps. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it is what 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 we need. And now here is the Luma. Here is the Homo. It looks like your band gap is even bigger due to optimization. So we go back to B C and do subtraction of the Luma. Will you please copy paste? Sorry? Copy paste this number into okay. whatever, control C, control V, or? Uh, on this number? This is on demand. Maybe we need to retype. Can you paste? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, minus. Should be plus, right? Oh. Yeah. So is this number here? Okay, so it is your band gap. And now if you uh, do, uh, yeah, multiply by. Oh, it's so big. No, it's that's hard. Okay, that's okay. The sound was from my side. Okay. Um, that's it? Yes, that's it. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. So uh, it's just confirmation that it will be UV range. Well, you, you wanted to share screen after Sarah? Okay, wait, wait, wait. It still doesn't doesn't go through. Uh, I use do you use wireless or wired connection? Maybe just connecting uh, to wired internet. Maybe. It's free oh, now. Here, I see it. Yeah, I don't know why. I just it just hung. Uh huh. Yes, I see the number. It, it does make sense. Yes. Okay. Everything is great. Yeah. Thank you. Now you can stop sharing. Okay, very good.
So, uh, okay, we have about less than half an hour, but it will be most uh, prudent thing. Um, so, there I'm going to show something in the very old fashioned way. There are better ways, and I think Sarah already found it. But uh, let's uh, learn hard road, and then uh, you you will be pleased to to discover shortcuts. So um, form check, and then the name of the check file, and then it goes through. Uh, if you are on different platform like a Ccast, uh, I'm, I'm going to type something that is not needed for Photon, but could be needed on other software. You can do module load Gauss, Gaussian. So on other platforms to do this command, you need uh, to do it first. Here, I just, it, it is not needed here, things will work anyway. So this is just reformatting of the uh, of this check file. Now, the next command will be uh, so-called kubegen. So kubegen is a part of the Gaussian. If you inst if you are installing Gaussian on your computer, it will come along naturally. Um, zero mo equals uh there's one can either type homo or is, there is a little bit more reliable way to count orbitals count number of orbitals and give give literal number so uh to one five times four will be 20 21 22 23 is 24 will be our homo number okay. molecular orbital equals 24 and then um, we can funnel the output into the file. Uh, we can call it molecular orbital 24, which is homo.cube. If I'm not sure that I reproduce the syntaxes correctly, I can go into the uh, uh, search engine and Ask cube gen Gaussian. So there are manual directory on the Gaussian uh, and it, uh, website. And you see what we did cube gen, number of processors like one or zero, then MO equals N. And uh, then after. Uh, we can just give the name. We need also give the name of the check file and then output file. I think I missed to give the name of the check file. So titanium CHP. Let's let's try if this if this will work. Um, now I'm doing ls minus ot. So it shows that there appeared a new file, mo24 cube. And you may observe by looking on the one, two, three, four, fifth column that it is bigger than input file, bigger than output, bigger than check, and bigger than form check. So this cube file is, I wouldn't say terribly huge, but it is like six megabytes compared to like. Uh, few kilobytes before. Um, this file contains point by point space map of this balloon, of this uh, distribution of electron in space. And this file uh, can be opened in the Gauss view. So uh, we can go in, back into Gauss view, to open, and then select file type, cube files. Show this MO24 cube open. 
and then we see nothing. So I shouldn't panic. I should play brave uh, and go into results, which will give me option for surfaces contours. So it shows surface action, new surface. So after this, I am getting something that looks like cloud. So um, please try to reproduce it. And I will say a few, few words. Oh, I see smiles. So uh, some people are really happy to see this, this figures. So um, if you are chemists or if you show it to a chemist, uh, how to interpret this figure before we go to boring technical details. So uh, wave functions are not observable themselves. In order to get observables, one need to either find expectation value or do absolute value squared, right? Uh, to get probability density. So wave function squared are always positive, but wave functions themselves can have positive, negative, can be complex. So on this image, there is a red and uh, green balloons, which stands for positive and negative parts of the wave function. Now, uh, we already talked about SPD orbital. Right. So let's quickly return to the periodic table as our reliable reference and look for oxygen. So oxygen does uh, have empty spots in its uh, valence shell, and it is exactly where it wants to pull electron from a metal. Right. But the orbital on oxygen has this shape, P x, P y, P z, right? So if oxygen is removing electron from someone else, this electron will be placed onto P orbital of oxygen, right? Now let's return to uh, this image. So these red spheres in our model are oxygens. And each of them has this green and uh, red balloons, right? So the highest occupied molecular orbital of titanium hydroxide is composed of four oxygen atomic p orbitals. Make sense? So four p orbitals come together collaboratively and pull an electron from titanium. So the whole orbital is composed of, of the uh, atomic orbitals of oxygen. Um, what else is interesting? When I was, uh, let me remove surface. Here, there are numbers. I is the value for new surface. So let me, instead of 0 0.02, put 0 0.04. Who can guess what will happen uh, to the molecular orbital? Uh, especially, I would like to hear input from Lola and Haley. What would happen if I change the ISO value? Okay, let's try. Let's keep an intrigue. Did the balloons became bigger or smaller? Smaller. How to interpret it? So what was this ISO value parameter is? So let me, it's one of my favorite uh, things that I can explain. Let, let me show. So we are doing three dimensional images and we, we will do them later. But let's go from one dimensional to two dimensional and then to three dimensional. Suppose, um, imagine we have um, like a one dimensional uh, creature, like worm or, or snake, right? Suppose this snake wants to investigate mathematical functions. Right? 
So there is a function. But the snake can go only along one line. So when a snake investigates a function, it sees one point and another point, and one point and another point. So if, if you set up specific uh, value of y not and explore the function along this line, the whole function will be reduced only to certain values. Make sense? Now, if we have two dimensional functions, then we also set up a value of a function that we want to explore. And then this two-dimensional uh, geographical profile will be like, if you do a section, it will convert into contour lines. If the, if the mountain was high, contour uh, circle will be big, right? If the, um, if the hill was not very high, it will be just a little circle. So contour maps, as people do in uh, geology, geography. So we reduce dimension from to the from functional which function which is two dimensional. We get numbers from surface. We get just circle. We reduce dimension. Now, if we do have a three dimensional object, if we know the value of the function like psi. Uh, with some index in x, y, and z. And we have a map. At each point of space, we have like field, value of this uh, wave function. We humans do not have four dimensional vision. If it is gradient of temperatures, we can just finger and feel, oh, okay, too, too hot or too cold, like trying to touch. But for, for uh, if we see something, then our, the surface is blocking the rest of the of the of the object, right? So the idea is the same. We select the value of the wave function and scan three-dimensional uh, surface for being equal to certain value. Then we have a certain where it was very dense, where the function was high, we will have like blobs, spheres. Where it was low, we will have nothing. And the whole space will be reproduced as combination of uh, spheres or clouds. So this is a concept of ISO surfaces. And this value that defines whether these uh, things are big or small are ISO values. So when ISO value is higher, the object will be smaller. When ISO value is smaller, the ob object will be bigger. Okay. Okay. Um, the clouds will shrink. Yes, well uh, uh, answered. I, I was just not attentive. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure, sure. I know that there is an emergent experiment in your lab. Uh, no, let me do another little numerical experiment demonstration and then I will go. Uh, make a tour along sheets. So just to make it consistent, we may want to do LUMA. So LUMA will be one atomic, uh, one number, one index of molecular orbitals bigger. So I, I will do MO equals 25. Same form check file, MO 25 cube, enter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. About 10 seconds. Ls minus ot. So I have another file of the same size, which is called mo25. Uh, let me, while I'm, I'm making demonstration, let me uh, copy paste the commands because uh, I just imagine myself in this situation. I would probably follow the whole story, but miss exact commands. Uh, Copy, paste, and uh, from the I just copy paste this. Copy, 
space if, if you use this reference. Okay, share the screen once again. Uh, going to go see you. Now I'm opening uh, open another cube file. MO25. Opening. First, it shows nothing, but I'm not panicking. I know that uh, I need to hit some buttons before the orbital will pop up. So going to results, surfaces. Uh, we already learned that a little bigger uh, ISO value is good. Surface action, new surface. Okay. So uh, how do I interpret this image? To interpret it, I may go back again to the periodic table of elements and click on titanium D orbital. So does it look similar? So it's like one of the D, one of the five D orbitals, right? So if you go close here. So this empty orbital has some traces of oxygen, but primarily it is localized on titanium on uh, titanium transition metal ion. Uh, let me redo it once again. Uh, move surface. Use even bigger number. New surface. Yeah. Now it uh, when we skip this noise, it looks like a donut and two like dumbbells, right? So how to, oh, I, I, I'm so happy to see your smiles. <laughs> it's, it's a typical criterion if uh, a person uh, will be efficient uh, computational chemist if uh, he or she smiles when seeing orbitals. <laughs> um, so we didn't consider chemical reaction how the titanium hydroxide was formed. But we can hypothesize by combining hydroxyl and titanium, oxygens were with removing electrons from titanium, right? And we see that the empty orbital, lowest unoccupied orbital is exactly the native orbital of titanium where, electron, where uh, oxygens have stolen the electron, right? So, and it, it, it gives us a little bit more information about uh, not only the gap, but qualitative analysis of this material. So the valence band is composed of O2P orbitals, right? And conduction band is composed of the titanium uh, 3D orbitals. Uh, right now we are only at the very beginning uh, entry we're just entering the world of characterization of, of uh, materials and their properties, but this observation is quite general for any oxides and any uh, uh, redox types of, of materials. Like if you have any metal oxides, valence band will be of uh, oxygen orbitals and uh, conduction band of the metal orbitals. If you have um, the another structures which are a result of oxidation like sodium chloride or cadmium selenium or lead selenide the valence band will be composed of the orbitals belonging to oxidizer who pulled uh, electrons and conduction band will be uh, composed of reducer typically the metal right so we, we learn something about materials with, with help of this uh, of this of these tools. Now uh, let me make a tour, make sure that everyone um, get these images, and then it will be time to depart. And uh, I'll plan to share different forms of information, maybe a little homework, right? Which will be like making these orbitals for maybe different structure, uh, and. Uh, ideas about how we get through the uh, lectures that we, we are missing, uh, either by watching pre-recorded or just studying or, or making together, uh, including a bit of theoretical material in your, in your presentations. Right now, we do not have 
enough time to speak about it, but I'll um, send information by email and uh, do not worry, nothing will be done without your consent and uh, proper votes. So I'll, get, I'll just give some options. Beautiful. Okay, yeah, it's excellent. Thank you. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Yes. And uh, here at the end, we need to give point cube. And in between, minus all, I think can be skipped, but what we need is the name of the full container. Oh, you do not have the check file. Let, let me sit here and quickly type something. But we, we need form check. FCHK. So it's a so if we go to differ. Hmm. Is a small separation. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, open. So we change it to cube. Cube. And then do not panic. Not surfaces. You already know that uh, bigger here will get sort of more beautiful pixels. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, when there will be time for uh, presentations, you may select the subject of ESP, electrostatic potential map. It is the uh, typically it is the last in the in the line, and uh, we don't have time to cover it in the um, class. But looking on that, you do some advanced steps, you probably will figure out how to how to show it. And for any synthetic chemist, it is a really important thing with the ESP map. Uh, first, you select uh, the surface of the equal density, and then you uh, color it based on whether it is more electronegativity. So it, it helps to find where there will be nuclear field attack coming to. Just uh, so whatever is three weeks. OK, it's beautiful. <clears throat> Form check. So what, what? missing data. Still working. Um, check. Let's just just try to. Open. Okay. okay. Let's just try to calculate once over again because it is really quick. So what you hope I need to give you. Just again. Checking that the results are good. Okay. Now let's go back to command line. So if she can check the T O. Mm -hmm. 
Да? Oh, so, you, so you, yes. So you need to type not what is on screen, but what is in your file in here. Okay. Okay, and then here. Uh, open the IPO files. Okay. Um, contours. We knew that a little bigger number would be helpful. Samples Talk. Okay. New service. New yeah. Okay, great. Uh, you can um, remove surface. Use some different number. Okay. Beautiful. Huh? So you can um, um, surface section uh, remove and then uh, you do. Okay. Thank you. Vincent, can you show the beautiful? Thank you. Okay, so I see why there is the, the image is beautiful, but uh, do you see any difference between what others are doing and, and what you are doing? So you did a square planner, square planner uh, coordination of uh, of the hydroxide. You see it? Uh -huh. Okay, and let's look. Uh, on, on the results of those who are online. So Hanmand, would you please share screen? Beautiful, thank you. Yeah, thank you for sharing. You can stop sharing. Uh, Lo, would you like to share screen? If you are available. You know, she, she told that she's on, on the on the important meeting. Uh, Sarah, would you like to share a screen? Uh -huh. Beautiful. Did you? Yeah, um... Sorry. Uh, so here I generated two prog parts, uh -huh. and here. I generated the 24 and 25 cup file, and then I visualized one of them. Okay, yeah, that's great. That's great, yeah, thank you. Uh, so I think we are, we are almost in time. Uh, the plan was to meet from five to, to seven. So I think we, we uh, covered a plan of, of three points, total energy, energies of orbitals, and uh, molecular orbitals, right? Um, it is enough for today. We're we going to uh, depart and disconnect. And um, Dr. Yulun Han will instruct you how to do density of states. Let me briefly, if anyone needs to immediately depart, please do. We're we we done with, with the 
is a uh, all important things. So you have noticed that there are many orbitals, like 24 occupied and another few dozens of unoccupied. And it is for quite small molecule. What if you go for a real material with like 100 or 1,000 atoms? The amount of orbitals will be huge. And it will be impossible to work on all of them, right? So there should be a way to visually represent all orbitals at once, all energies of orbitals at once. And this is the so-called density of states concept, where one looks for energy interval and tells other any orbitals there or there are no orbitals at all. And uh, one can just extract energies of all orbitals and just uh, write a little code how to do it. But there were many people in the world who already did it and uh, you just get acquainted to one of the versions, right? So it will be summary. The material with wide gap will show like no region, zero in the middle, which means band gap, and then some peaks corresponding to valence band and conduction band. A metal will show this uh, valence and conduction band come, come together. And details on, on this will be uh, offered by uh, Dr. Han in a week from now. In the lectures that uh, we are missing and I'll probably share recordings and well, I'll, I'll design something. We need to start from several fundamental concepts and I can like summarize them in lay language within like 30 seconds. Um, the actual wave function of a molecule which contains so many electrons is some sort of a product of wave functions of each molecular orbital, right? So it's product. All molecular orbitals are multiplied by each other and we get a function of 24 variables or whatever, 24 frames times three because there are three coordinates. Uh, this idea, we, we are not doing this practically, but it is, we keep it in mind while we're developing theory. The way how to construct overall wave function out of molecular orbitals is referred to as Slater determinant. So um, if it is described without rush within like 40 minutes, it's quite easy. But if one just glances through Wikipedia, it looks like a hard concept. It is not hard, but one needs just slowly meditate. And this concept of Slater determinant is a foundation of anything else we will do later. So uh, Slater determinant, and then uh, we will need a concept of so-called exchange interaction. In very lay language, also do not quote me in public, when I was drawing here the figure how the uh, electrons uh, create a cloud in between two atoms and then atoms are attracted, this is related to the concept of exchange interaction. So it gives justification why molecule is stable, although the all pieces like ions repel each other, electrons themselves repel each other, but molecule is stable. Uh, it's also quite easy if one meditate and uh, talks about it within like 40 minutes. If one tries to jam it or look through Wikipedia, it also looks like counterintuitive. So, and based on these two concepts, one, um, the goal of the like three weeks long chapter uh, to take all the practical and um, abstract concepts and develop an algorithm. So before we considered an algorithm, how the uh, position of ions are optimized. The Harvey Fox theory is very similar algorithm, but instead of finding the positions of ions, this algorithm searches for three-dimensional shapes of orbitals. The algorithm that simultaneously optimizes shapes of all orb orb orbitals. And uh, in about, if you do not, if I do not want to fail the program of a class, I need to make any effort that, that we complete this uh, party fork algorithm in three weeks by, by any means. Okay, and, and after we are done with uh, Harvey fork algorithm and basic use of Gaussian, our, um, uh, so it will be end of February and uh, month of March will be for density functional theory and VASP software.
Okay, done. I'm talking too much. Uh, th 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 thank you much. Everyone is welcome to disconnect and depart, and I'll stay here just in case if there are any quick one-to-one -one questions. So meeting is done. Don't feel hesitant to disconnect or depart. Uh, have a nice weekend and nice uh, weekend a half because there is a chance that uh, two weeks for some of you we will see each other in, in person only in two weeks, like uh, Wednesday or no Tuesday after after the president's day right and until then for most of you will interact electronically on wednesday here there will be dr han and some i know that uh three attendees of this class are going to the same conference so you will see each other a little more frequently okay thank you yeah thank you well i'm going to disconnect do you have objections? Questions? Questions one, questions two, questions three. I'm disconnecting.